They've been coming in their millions every year from all over the world. Muslim pilgrims fulfilling a lifetime dream to perform one of their religion's five main pillars, Hajj. The sea of people, waves upon waves engulfing the city of Mecca has become an image synonymous with the holy city. But this year it's completely different. The coronavirus pandemic has meant that pilgrims are not able to travel. Saudi authorities have put Mecca under lockdown. They've said only 1,000 people will be allowed to perform Hajj. All of them either nationals or residents of Saudi Arabia. The annual pilgrimage is a huge source of revenue for the Saudi government. Although there is little transparency from Riyadh on how much exactly it brings in, estimates put the figure in the billions of dollars. Losing out on that, as well as all the money from those who would usually perform the smaller pilgrimage of Umrah during the rest of the year, is a big setback. I think it's very significant uh, because uh, Saudi Arabia's standing and influence in the Islamic world is mainly derived from two factors. The first one is being the host and the custodian of the two holy mosques and the organizer of the most important ritual, religious ritual in Islam, which is Hajj. 2020 has already been a tough year for the kingdom, with oil prices reaching an all-time low after a trade war with Russia that saw the price of a barrel go as low as $27. To make things even worse, the COVID-19 pandemic has increased economic pressure on Saudi Arabia even more, forcing the government to increase taxes and reduce salaries. While many are commending Saudi authorities for their decision to prohibit pilgrims to travel to Mecca this year, there are those who are critical. Questions are being asked about how the 1,000 people being allowed to perform Hajj are chosen, and will there be a fair distribution of Hajj passes to all nationalities living in the kingdom? Until now, authorities have failed to provide any information. In the past, people have scrutinized Saudi Arabia for failing to deal with the huge crowds that converge on the holy city. On far too many occasions, people have died due to stampedes or failure by the government to safeguard their security, like when a construction crane fell on worshippers in 2015. This year, the criticism is of Riyadh's failure to deal with small crowds in a clear and transparent manner. Jamal Al Shayal, Al Jazeera. Well, the move will also affect hotels, restaurants, and tourism operators in the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, and the aviation industry too, of course, since many companies usually charter flights to the region for Hajj. Uh, let's speak now to Jawad Anani, who's a, an economist and former deputy prime minister and foreign minister in Jordan, joins us on Skype from Amman. Welcome to the program, Mr. Anani. Uh, so this year, Thank you very much. it's going to be very Thank different. A relative handful of pilgrims instead of the the regular two million plus, this is going to have a serious impact on Saudi's economy, isn't it? Yes, well, uh, the number is estimated between 10 to 12 billion dollars. That will be Saudi Arabia's income from religious tourism. Uh, this year, I don't think that they will make uh, even one tenth or one twelfth of that, uh, simply because of the corona crisis and because of the stoppage of travel. Uh, yet another uh, frustrating factor uh, is the fact that Hajj, uh, you know, they have, the uh, Saudi government has been investing heavily in the infrastructure, hotels, and also in improving the size and expanding its capacity, especially around Kaaba. So in a way, what happened this year uh, is that, uh, you know, this, this year was supposed to be a, a much higher year than last year. Uh, and uh, actually by Saudi projections and diversification plan, in uh, the year 2022, they were supposed to make 150, to go up as high as $150 billion. Uh, right now, until uh, 2019, uh, the uh, Hajj contributed uh, about 6.7% of, of their total GDP right. and about 20% of their non-oil GDP. Okay, so, so when, when, you couple, this, when you couple the loss of this amount of money, $12 billion or, or so, uh, and, and who knows what the cumulative amount will be, several tens of billions more, when you couple that with the loss of oil revenue, what is the impact for the, the uh, average person in the street in Saudi going to be? Well, uh, as you know, the average, the oil, the price of oil, for instance, should be $70 or even more than that for Saudi Arabia to be able to balance their budget. 
Uh, now that it is standing around 40, 41, 42 uh, dollars per barrel, uh, that is going to be way short of covering the deficit, which is going to grow. If you add to that also the co other costs of war and so on, so in a way the Saudi government is up is fighting an uphill battle, uh, which may be a very challenging year for them. Yeah, in what sense will it be a challenging year? I mean, Saudi Arabia is a rich country. How much of a problem will this be? Well, as far as you know, Saudi Arabia has been trying to borrow money from abroad in order to cover their cash deficit. The question, you may have lots of wealth, but you don't have lots of sufficient cash to meet your immediate payments. So the problem is not a lack of potential resources. The problem is that there is a shortage of cash, which usually comes from oil, from pilgrimage, and from other sources which have been dampened uh, severely dampened by, by the corona and the other circumstances in the Middle East. Uh, Jawad Anani, former Deputy Prime Minister in Jordan, I do appreciate your perspective on this. Thank you very much indeed.